Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another math video. This one I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use the definition of derivatives, uh, derivative to take the derivative of a radical. So this guy over here, y is equal to um, to the square root of 2x minus 1. So I'm going to use the definition of derivative. And uh, so for those of you who are doing calculus right now, you've probably seen this definition a few times. So the definition of derivative is that f prime of x is equal to, and f prime of course the same as y prime, is equal to the limit as, and I use h, you could use delta x, a lot of people use delta x, as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So the first thing you need to do when doing this definition is to put your function into this form. So f of x plus h and minus f of x. So the f of x plus h, what we're going to do is we're going to think of this as one thing, this f of x right here, x plus h, and that's going to go where we see an x in our function. So what we have is we have the limit as h goes to zero. So a common mistake for students is not the right keep writing that guy down the side. You really want to do that. Um, your prof is going to get mad if you don't. Probably take off marks. So my function is square root of 2x minus 1. So I need to plug in that x plus h in where I see an x. So I have square root of 2. And then I have x plus h minus 1 all underneath the square root. Make sure your square root extends all the way and then minus and then our just our function so that's just what this guy is so square root of 2x minus 1 all over h so now what we need to do is we need to think of a way how we can calculate this limit so if I subbed in h right away what I'd actually get is indeterminate form so it'd be 0 over 0 so what I have to do is I have to think of a way in order to get rid of that indeterminate form. So ideally what I want to happen is cancel this h on the bottom. So when you have a, uh, an original function that's a radical or a square root, what you have to do is you have to conjugate. So you have to conjugate. So what the conjugate is, is if you have something like um, a minus b, like we sort of have here, we have something minus something, um, then in order to conjugate it, what we do is we times it by basically the same thing, but we just change that sign in the middle. So the conjugate of a minus b is a plus b, and the conjugate of a plus b is a minus b. So what ends up happening, if we foiled this out, I would get a squared minus b squared. So it actually works out really nice. So we don't actually have to go through the process of foiling it, but that's what I did. The middle terms actually cancel. Actually, I'll, I'll take you through that. Let me just erase this middle step here. So um, we would get negative a b and plus a b and then a minus b squared and these would cancel and I'd be just left with a squared minus b squared. So that's useful, and I'll show you how it's useful. So we're going to conjugate this guy over here. So what I have to do is I have to multiply the top and bottom by this with a plus sign. So it can get a little bit messy, so I'm going to try and write small. 2x plus h minus 1. So this doesn't change underneath here at all. Just the plus sign, that's all. That changes to a plus sign. And then um, 2x minus 1. And I'm going to write this in brackets and then I'll write this guy in brackets and then I'll put that over and if you want to be really neat guys you could write a new step too but I just don't have the space here so I'm gonna get a little lazy mathematicians are notoriously lazy and then say exact same thing on the bottom 2x minus 1 so what ends up happening is if you look here this these are conjugates so what I get all I need to do is square this guy and square this guy and separate them with a minus sign. So that's the beauty. We don't have to go through some big complicated um, foil method with the conjugate. All we need to do is basically square this guy and square this guy. So when you have a radical that works out really really nice because 
Um, what ends up happening, of course, is you the square cancels with the square root. So when I square this, I get 2x plus h minus 1. This is where we have to be really careful. We got the subtract over here, so we'll put the subtract sign in, and then we'll square this guy, so we got to use brackets around it, 2x minus 1. So we got to sort of protect it from this negative sign a little bit. All right, and now on the bottom, I am not going to do a thing with that. I'm just going to leave this guy all by itself, because remember what I said. We Normally with these definition of derivatives, we want to cancel out my h somehow. So then I'm left with minus 1, can't forget about that, and then in. make sure you don't forget about the plus sign too, it's now plus on the bottom. Just like I have right here, that's a plus sign. So now, I'm hoping something can cancel, so if you look at this part, we can simplify this a lot. So limit as h goes to 0, so I'm left with 2x plus 2h, so I multiply through, I distribute it, just like that and then the minus 1 and then you gotta be really careful about this negative sign so that makes the negative 2x the positive 2x to be a negative and this negative has to affect that negative 1 so that makes it plus 1 and of course now we're still got the bottom part we can't get lazy we gotta write it all out and hopefully you're still writing your limits 2 of x plus h minus 1 plus 2x minus 1, just like that. And now, I want to simplify this top as much as I can. So, limit as h goes to 0. So my, um, let me change my color here a little bit. So my 2x's cancel. 2x subtract 2x, of course, just 0. And then my negative 1 and one cancels. So if you look what's going to happen, all I have left on the top is this 2h and all I have left on the bottom is this h So with, with this guy. So really what I can do is I can cancel that h with this h now. So that is really really nice because now what we have left is, uh, let me just change back here to white. So I'm left with 2 over the square root of 2 of x plus h minus 1 plus square root 2x minus 1. So now I can evaluate my limit. So what I mean by that is I don't need to write it anymore. Basically where I see an h I'm putting 0. So I have 2, and I'm running out of space here guys, 2 over, hopefully you can see this, 2x plus 0 minus 1. So that's all underneath one square root. And then let me extend the sky a little bit. And then plus 2x minus 1, just like that. So I'll just go over here. So that leaves me with 2 on the top, all over. And if you look at this bottom, that's just going to be root. And all I have there is 2x minus 1 plus square root 2x minus 1. And when you put those together, that's not, um, it's going to be 2 square root 2x minus 1. So the mistake that people make is they actually put a square instead of a 2. So you have two of them, so it's 2 times, right? You don't have two of them times together, which will be squared. And so we can cancel, cancel, and that leaves us with 1 over square root of 2x minus 1. And in my last step, I usually like f prime of x. And then highlight there, just like that. So guys, I hope this video helped. I can guarantee you on any Calculus 1 final, any CPT, Calculus Placement Test, like my students are writing, you're going to get a definition of derivative. So this is one of the types that you need to know. So best of luck. I'll see you guys in class. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.